We are presenting today on the NEON API using Python, and this is part of an ongoing seminar and webinar series, um, which we'll provide a little more information on at the end if you're not already aware. Um, so my name is Bridget, and I will be uh, leading you through some scripts in Python to work with the API today. And Claire, um, also at NEON, will be helping out with the chat and um, answering questions as they come up. And we'll also leave time for questions at the end. So Claire, if you want to give a quick introduction. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm a data scientist here at NEON, um, and I work on a lot of our publicly available code resources and that kind of thing. Um, and like Bridget said, um, I will just be here uh, monitoring the chat and so forth uh, while Bridget presents. So if you have questions, you can chat me there. Thanks, Claire. Um, and I didn't give a real introduction, but I, I work mostly with the um, Airborne Observation Platform team on the remote sensing data, and then also with Claire on the data skills team um, and help develop a lot of our tutorials in Python. So with that, we'll get started. So just a one second or one minute overview of the NEON um, project. Uh, NEON stands for the National Ecological Observatory Network. Um, we hope that since you're here, you already know a little bit about it, but we offer over 180 free um, openly available ecological data products, um, including data that's collected using observational sampling, instrumented data, and uh, remote sensing data. So today we'll be talking about how you can access this data. You can access the data through the NEON data portal, and this is um, a GUI uh, way to manually download data. You select the sites and the data products that you want and go through a process to download the, the data and certain files if you only want certain files, for example. But NEON also offers an API, um, which we'll get into in this webinar, and that uh, we have tools for working with that, extensive tools in R, which Claire has help develop largely and maintain, um, and this is the NEON utilities package. But you can also access and work with the API in Python or any programming language of your choice. So the API in a nutshell is, um, it stands for Application Programming Interface. And it's basically a way that you can automatically download data um, or explore data even in different uh, programs without having to go through the whole web interface. Um, and essentially it allows for constructing URLs that will return information about the NEON data in a machine readable format, in, in our case, a JSON format. And uh, we encourage you to explore the API by going to this website here, which Claire will link in the chat. Um, and that allows you to interactively look at the different, uh, how the API is set up and the different endpoints. Uh, and we will get into that in this. Uh, webinar as well in Python, but um, this is kind of a nice overview page that uh, we encourage you to look at. So Claire's also going to drop these links in the chat, but uh, for following along with this tutorial, uh, we do have a web page. It was linked through the original um, webinar page. And then we also have a markdown, and I'll show this in a minute, but I encourage you if you're following along with the live coding, um, the markdown allows you to copy each uh, code chunk pretty easily. And if you get lost or behind, this is a good way to um, keep that code uh, handy and, and copy it in. And then lastly, we do have a lot of um, information on working with the API in our programming language as well. Um, and if that's your language of choice, there's another tutorial on that and, um, and a lot of resources on the Neon Utilities as well. All right, so with that, just jumping ahead a little bit, I will switch to the live coding. All right, so these are the, um, the tutorial pages that you can follow along with the live coding section. Um, so this is our neon, neonscience.org resources, Learning Hub has all of our tutorials and um, hopefully that link is in there. And then here's the markdown page, um, which is on our GitHub Neon Science, Neon Data Skills repository. And so I'll just show real quick, if you scroll down, um, each of these little gray boxes are the code chunks that we'll be working through. And if you hover over to the right, you can click 
it will copy that cell or that um, it's called a cell or code chunk to your clipboard and then you can paste it in your uh, programming uh, interface of choice. So I'm gonna be demonstrating the code from this workshop in Jupyter Notebooks, which is a nice interactive platform for working with Python. It also works with other programming languages, but you're not required to use that. Um, and I'll just show a little um, demo at the start of how, how to work with that. Um, it's nice because you can add markdown comments and annotation as you go. So it makes it really nice for sharing. And that's actually what um, our tutorials are built in on the webpage as well. Um, so to open Jupyter Notebooks, I always start with the command prompt. Um, actually, it's already showing up because I searched for this recently. You can just type in Anaconda, and then I just open this prompt. And if you've done, if you've um, installed Python using Conda, um, you should have this program. And then um, I created this folder on my desktop just called Neon API Python. So I'm going to do all of my uh, coding in that folder. So first, I'm just going to change directories or CD into that folder. It's on my desktop. So you can either set up a folder or do it locally and move it at the end. But um, we just encourage you to have some sort of um, local organization for that. And then to open Jupyter Notebooks, I'm just going to type Jupyter notebook. And it will it may take a second, but it's going to open up a, a separate web page. I'm a little bit laggy here. And here it's it's opened up this home page. Um, yours should be blank if you don't have anything in that folder already. I just did a test notebook in here, so I'll ignore this for now, but I'm going to create a new by clicking on this new. And then I have Python 3 installed, so a new Python 3 kernel. <clears throat> so before we dive in, I'll just give a little overview of how Jupyter is organized. It looks like it's a web page, but it's actually running Python in the background. And in this command prompt back here, if I control C or close out of this, it will actually close down the Python instance that I have open. So just be aware of that when you're working in Jupyter not to close down this um, screen in the background until you're ready to be done. So up here, I'll just rename this Neon API Live Coding. So that's my notebook. And if I go in here, we'll see that was created as an IPy notebook folder or file. And then there's all these options here at the top. So file, um, different options in here, you can save, edit. Here's um, where you can work with your different cells. Each of these little um, chunks is called a cell. And then you can also change the cell type. By default, it's code. And so that means it's Python code, or you can use uh, Markdown. And I'll, I'll show an instance of that throughout the, um, this workshop here. And then um, another thing to be aware of is the kernel is what's running that Python in the background. And so um, if you're getting a little behind or you run a lot of cells and you wanna clean up your whole output and, and just start fresh, you can do this restart and clear output. Um, and that will, that will allow you to run each cell again as a fresh instance. Um, and then lastly, with this help, there's a lot of shortcut keys. And I'll be using the shortcuts, I'll tell you as I use them, but one of the main ones I'll use is just control enter, um, which runs the cell. And otherwise, um, you can hit this arrow to run it, um, but it's just a nice shortcut to do the control enter way. So first, uh, we're gonna import some required Python packages. And hopefully everyone got to uh, follow the ins installation requirements, but there's only a few that are actually needed for this. So these ones are import OS, and you can either use a comma or a separate um, import on each line. Request, and that's the Python package that works with APIs specifically. JSON, and then iter tools, which is just a nice package for helping to iterate through different data structures. So shift enter or run 
should run that cell and hopefully you won't have any errors here. If you do have an error, you may need to import one of these and I would suggest importing one by one. And uh, Claire, feel, feel free to stop me if people have issues and we can work through um, at a convenient time. All right, so with the API, um, first we're just going to define the, the URL, the base URL. And so for everything on the NEON API, it's the same um, server or URL. And so we'll just define that here. So we'll call it server. Oops. And it's going to be http colon slash slash data dot neon science. Org, you'll see that over and over again with me on slash API slash V0 slash. So we'll run that. And now we've defined that server variable. So the first thing we're going to explore are uh, the sites endpoint of the Neon API. And uh, that basically provides information about all of our field sites across the, uh, across the observatory um, spanning the entire continent. And so um, we're going to start with one of our sites in the in domain 17, which is in California, called uh, Tea Kettle. And sorry, it should be site code. And all of our sites have this four letter or four, yeah, four letter code um, that's an abbreviation for the full name. So we'll define that. Let's just add a comment here. Define the site. <clears throat> All right. And actually, I'm just going to pull this out. And then you can follow along. Hopefully, this isn't too um, confusing here. But you can follow along with the. Um, with the markdown as well. Okay, so next we're going to define the URL. And so with that site endpoint. So we can just combine these together in Python with um, a plus sign that just concatenates the strings together. And then this sites is the endpoint we're trying to look at. And we can add that site code we just defined to the end to define the full URL. So we'll run that cell. And then let's just take, oh, oops, I accidentally converted that. We'll come put that back to a code. So we'll just see what that URL is. So here you can see we're using the sites endpoint and then we've defined it or defined our site. <clears throat> Next, uh, we can use the request package within Python to request the URL. So let's just set that to a variable called site request. And then the package works by using this get get method. And then we can set that URL in there. And then we can convert it to a JSON object um, using the JSON method. And so, uh, oops should be requests dot get not request. And that request, if you remember at the top, we just imported here. So let's just say request URL and set to JSON. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with JSON, it's essentially just a nested data format um, with key value pairs. And so if you're familiar with Python, it, it translates well into the dictionary object structure. So don't worry too much about the details here, but um, for now you can just think of it as like a nested storage of a lot of different information. And we'll explore that in a little bit. So um, if you are familiar with dictionaries in Python, um, we can, use this keys part of the dictionary to see what all is included in here. So site json.keys should show us all of the um, keys in this in this object. And so right here we can just see there's one key that's data. Um, and that's not to say that that's all that's, that's in there, but basically everything in this JSON format is stored under this data key. 
So we can go to the next level of the structure uh, using this same um, setup. So let's do site, site JSON. Now let's pull the data object and then look at the keys under that. So now we can see there's quite a few other um, pieces of information that are stored in here. So we have the site code, site name, description, type, latitude, longitude, code, all these different things. Um, and then also things like that we'll get into in a little bit, but releases refers to the NEON data release, uh, which is an annual process where we uh, provide data and updated data for each year. And then data products, and these are the all the different data products that NEON offers. So again, don't worry too much about the, um, the syntax here, but we'll use this iter tools package, which is a package that helps iterate through through different structures and then look at some of these items in here. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this over so I don't mess it up. So here I just copied and then I used control V to paste. So this is basically gonna show us a dictionary of the items in the site JSON data that we just looked at. Um, so instead of just showing us the keys, it's going to show us some of the values as well. And actually, I'm going to I'm going to look through um, all of these. On the tutorial, we suppressed some of the output. This was just going for through the first twelve items in here, but we'll look at all of them um, and enter. And you'll see it creates this scroll down because there's quite a bit of information in here. So um, we didn't want to include all of this on the on the tutorial web page, but we can go through some of it here. So now, if we look in each of these keys, we can see um, details about this site. So, like we said, the code is tea kettle or T E A K K. It stands for lower tea kettle. Um, we have all this information about the location, the domain. It's in the Pacific Southwest, and then we can get into the available data releases here. So. We've had three data releases so far from 2021 and most recent one in 2023 uh, of end of January. And then there's URLs for the API endpoints for each of these releases. And then lastly, we have all the available data products for this site. So uh, this is where it gets a little long because it shows all the availability, but we won't, we won't dive too much into that here. You can just see that there's a lot of information stored in this site's endpoint. So um, let's go ahead and look at a single data product in here. And we'll go to the next cell down here. Um, and don't worry too much about which one I selected here. You could actually do any of them, but for the sake of this, we'll just choose one of the AOP or airborne observation data products. So here we're going into the data and then we're gonna go to this last piece, the data products. So again, this is just nesting down into the structure. And then negative three means the third from the last, but you could also do something like zero or any, any index in here that's valid. So let's take a look at this one. It happens to be the <clears throat> slope and aspect data product, which is one of our products from the LiDAR instrument. And here we can see some other information, such as the available months that this data exists, and then all of the URLs for each of those available months. And then lastly, the available releases. So AOP is a little unique in that it doesn't have, um, or each, at the end of each uh, release, we, we uh, replace it with the latest release. So it only has one release, although um, we have been releasing for three years. So we can also look at every single data product that's available, essentially by looping through um, all the all the data products in that nested structure. So let's go ahead and do that with the for loop. So here we're looping through the data data products dictionary. Everything stays in this dictionary format, and we'll just use print to display some information, including the data product code, 
and data product title. So we'll print the um, code. So this is just a nice way to see every single data product that NEON offers um, and with its associated code. So you can scroll through, we have all a ton of instrumented data products. We have uh, observational data products. And then all the AOP data products, we'll start with this um, DP1, DP2, DP3.3. And so that's maybe a quick way to isolate those. Um, and just as a quick aside, we do recommend for the observational and instrumented data products uh, to work with the NEON utilities, because um, that's already has a lot of built-in functionality for wrangling the data after the fact. Um, you definitely can work with it in Python, but it's not going to be, it's going to have a lot more pre-processing involved. So um, we, yeah, just, just a little note about that. And, um, a lot of people tend to work with remote sensing data in Python, which is why we're trying to make more, uh, more tools available in Python for that. <clears throat> All right, so now that we've explored some of the site endpoints and some of the data products, um, we can start querying the data products and, and actually diving into those, uh, what's available for each of those. So uh, we looked a little bit at the available months and here we will, uh, we will try and look at one of the available products. So here we'll make a request using the request package again, dot get. And then our new, uh, I'll go ahead and write this on a separate line, but our product URL actually, yeah, that shouldn't mess anything up. It's always a little dangerous changing things in live coding, but our product URL is going to be the same server that we defined before. This time we'll use the products endpoint and then um, the product code. And I think I might have missed that step. So um, here's another quick trick. If you do insert cell above, you can add another uh, code cell. So product code, for this example, we'll use the um, canopy height model or ecosystem structure data product, which is dp3.30015.00. And you can see that here as well in the codes that we just printed out. So here it says the product code to look at canopy kind of type model or CHM for short. So we'll go ahead and run that. Um, I'm gonna comment out control uh, slash is comment in, on Windows at least. Let's just take a look at this URL. And then we can go ahead and print. All right. So here we can see um, it's printed out and it actually already hyperlinks it. So we could actually click on this and see the whole JSON in a web page. Um, but we'll go ahead and explore this in, in Python. I just wanted to show that you can, for each of these URLs, you can explore them um, interactively in the web as well. So next, we're basically just trying to show all the available months of data for this data product at our site, Tea Kettle. So this is a little bit long, uh, but it's mostly just a loop to print out some relevant information here. So this shows like some earlier from some of the earlier loops we just made. So here is we're setting if the product matches our code that we just specified, product code, in this case, the CHM code. Um, and you don't have to use the parentheses here, but you can. Um, we'll print 
the available months, uh, which are saved under this available months key. And then let's also print the URLs for each of those months. Oops. And uh, we'll do that in loop two just for display purposes. So it's a nested loop. It's a, it's a little bit messy, but it should. Um, and I missed URL. But it should give us a nice little output here. OK. So here we can see uh, we have five available months for this data product at, at Teakettle from 2013 to 2021. And then here's the URLs for each of those months that are available. So again, I'm just gonna click on this last one to show you what it looks like. And here is essentially a, a long date JSON, just a convoluted structure that contains a lot of all of the data files for that um, available data in 2021. So each of these is a file um, that's associated with that data product. So AOP tends to have a higher volume of, or higher number and, and larger volume of files than the other data products because a lot of the items are consolidated. Um, but we, we tile our, our level three data into lots of 5,000 other tiles. Bridget, we're we're suddenly we can barely hear you, or at least I can barely hear you. Thanks. Let me try to sort that out. Okay, that was much better. Okay, I'll speak up. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and please interrupt if if um anyone's struggling. It looks like one other person was at least. So we've got an idea of, of all the data that are available for a given um, AOP site, for example. Um, and uh, I think next we can we can look we can look more into this specific data product. So I'll, I'll skip ahead just a few cells in the interest of time, but. Um, Let's take a look at the product abstract, um, which basically is a description of what this product contains. So I'm just gonna do a few print statements. I'll do these on separate cells. Um, oops. Actually, can't quite skip ahead here. So yeah, we'll make a request. Um, into this products endpoint. But actually, sorry, we already made that. So let's use this product URL up here. So we'll just make um, a JSON out of that URL. So that I'm diverging a little bit from what's on here, but you can either follow along or, or follow along live. So um, I just called that URL dot JSON. And then we'll take a look at this product name here. Oh, and of course, when you change things, it doesn't always work. Oh, because I didn't actually get, so I have to make my request. So product request, request.get, and then we had already defined that product URL here. So if you're following along with the tutorial, all I did is I defined this endpoint with the product code as a variable called product URL, and then I'm making a request to get that. And then we can convert that to a JSON similar to how we did before.
So let's try that. Okay. So yeah, here we can see um, the data product name is ecosystem structure. And then let's also look at the uh, product abstract. I'm just going to copy this and use abstract instead. So here's a nice little blurb um, that you can read through. I won't go through the whole thing here, but it basically describes how this data product is generated um, and summarizes that. So the canopy height model is generated from our LIDAR data, and it's essentially a difference between the all the returns that bounce off the top of the canopy and the ground returns. And so we create a digital terrain model, which is essentially um, if you stripped all the trees off of the, the forest, um, you could pull out the just the terrain underneath. And then um, the digital surface model is generated by if, if, for example, you like put a blanket over the entire canopy, the digital surface model would represent that surface, which includes all the vegetation. So if you difference those two models, you can get the canopy height model. And that's essentially what we've done to generate the ecosystem structure data product. So um, the, the Data product JSON that we just created also has some nested um, variables in here that we looked at a little bit, but we'll we'll dive into those a little bit more coming up. So let's just look at the all the keys or all of the substructures that are stored in this product JSON that we just created. So you'll see we're kind of repeating through a lot of the same um, same types of code. So here we see that there's information about the site code, the available months, the available URLs, and then the available releases. <clears throat> so similar to before, we can loop through these. Um, so before we looked, looped through each of the data product codes and got the associated data product name, here we're doing the same thing, but we're looping through all the available months, and then we're printing the month and then the associated URL. So here, we're just pulling out all the site codes. We're only going to match the site code that we defined. And then here is just a little trick to um, zip together the months and the URLs so that we can nicely print them out. So that was available. Oh, data URLs here. And then we're just printing the month. The month um, now, of course, is this zipped thing, so we want to print each object out separately. And then um, we're just going to extract a single data URL at the end from this. So in this case, let's look at the 2018 T kettle data. So it's pulling out um, the URL associated with the month 2018-06. Okay, so here's all the available data we have for T kettle for that data product and for that month and year. So I'll just click on this so we can see what it looks like again in the URL. And here you can see um, before we saw all the files and now we see the files and we also see where they're stored. Um, so Neon moved its storage to the Google Cloud Storage. And so everything's going to be stored under this storage, Google APIs, um, and then some nested folder structure. 
So actually, if you copy this and open it in a new web page, it will automatically download that data. Um, but you can also just do that directly through Python. So I'm just showing you how you would do that from the web. Okay, so back to our notebook. Let's print out the URL that we defined here. And that was actually the one that I had just put on, so I won't go there again. Okay, so now we know all the available um, months or years of data for that data product in that site. And next we're gonna go and, um, and explore where we can find those locations directly from Python. I, I'd give you a quick preview of how you can find where the data are stored from the web page, but we'll go ahead and do that in Python now. Okay, just gonna copy this. So now we're making a request for the available data from 2018-06. Um, again, we're gonna make the request with our endpoint. This time we're adding, we could actually just put this, um, if we copy this, it should be the same as that URL we just defined. I'll just show you that. Yeah, so that's the same URL here. So I'll just say data URL for clarity. And then a nice handy trick uh, with Pi with Jupyter is if you do escape DD, it will delete that cell. So if you want to test something, that's kind of a nice way to do it. So let's make the request for that data URL that we just defined and then convert it to a JSON again. All right. <clears throat> again, uh, we'll, we'll look at all of the available keys for that JSON dictionary structure we just made. And here we can see um, for this URL, we have information about the product code, site code, months, that's the published month, all of these months here. The release, um, for AOP, we saw that it will just be released 2023. Um, and then packages and files. Um, the packages aren't as relevant to AOP data, so I won't get into them here, but the files are really what we're interested in um, in order to download something. So let's just take a look at um, one, of the, one of the files in here um, by looping through just the first of all the keys in the first file that's pulled up. And the first file, uh, Python has zero based indexing. So that's all we're doing here is pulling out the first file. And then let's print the key. And then um, dash T is just a tab. So we can see it a little more easily. So we're gonna pull out the data and then the files. So here we can see under data, the last um, object that's stored are the files. And let's just take a look at the first file. Again, indexed by the zero. And then pull out that key since we're looping through all the keys. Okay, so here we can see that each file has information about the name of the file, the size. Um, all three of these are essentially just checksum um, information to make sure that uh, if, when you download, you can compare against the um, the file checksum, so don't worry too much about that. The CRC32C is what we use for Google Cloud Storage. And then um, the URL of that file. So again, like I showed you, you can just download by clicking on that. You could also download um, this first file by clicking this link and you'll see it just downloads to your um, local storage. So that's pretty powerful. With the API, we can extract, I know this looks a little convoluted, but we can extract um, 
everything down to where that file is stored and then just automatically download it. So um, let's just take a look at some of the different files that are stored under this data product. Um, we know that all the files are saved under this files object. And so um, let's just do another quick loop through the files. Um, you don't, uh, in, the, in the tutorial, I just spliced to take the look at the first 10 files. I'll go ahead and look at all the files here. Again, that was just to suppress the output so we didn't take up the whole, um, a ton of space there on the web, on the tutorial page. Um, but let's just look at the names of all the files. All right, so here we can see we have um, something and that follows the standard naming structure that you probably aren't super familiar with if you haven't worked with NEON data a lot, but they all follow this structure of NEON, um, the domain, in this case, we're in domain 17, which includes um, a lot of the California sites. TCATLE is the four digit site name. DP is the data product um, level number. And so we are looking at a level three data product. Um, and then this is the UTM coordinates of the bottom left corner or the bottom, the, uh, I guess, Southwest corner of each of these tiles, data tiles. Um, so this is UTM XY. And then lastly, the, the uh, name of the file. So the canopy height model is, stand, or CHM stands for canopy height model. And um, with our canopy height model data, we have a lot of associated metadata. And so all of these other files that end in, in these different extensions are shape files. Um, there's four different shape file extensions. And then we also provide KML files along with them. And these are essentially just defining the boundary of each of these files. Um, apologies that the names don't match here. We are going back and, um, and, and renaming uh, with the standard convention for some of the metadata, but um, if, as long as the UTM coordinates here match up, that's the associated shape file for the, each of the geotip files or tiles. So for this exercise, um, just to wrap it up, we're going to download a single canopy height model geotip tile and then in Python plot it so you can see um, what it looks like in, the, in real life. So um, next I'm just gonna print out only the TIFF files. So I'm just gonna skip over a lot of the um, metadata shape files. And we can do that again in a for loop using an if statement to filter out only the um, TIFF data. So um, I don't wanna print out all of the files because there's a ton of them. We already looked at all of them. So I'll just select the first, I'll go ahead and do the first 50. And then this time if um, we'll only pull out the CHM TIFF files. So if all this is doing is it's pulling out, I'll just finish typing and then explain. So in all the file names, if this chm.tiff string is included in that name, then we're gonna print the name of the file and print the URL of that file. I probably shouldn't have done so many here, but um, so it's looking through all the files, including the metadata files, which is why it's only printing out a subset of the canopy height model tiles. So again, to download the data, you can just directly click on the link and I'll, I'll do this first one, 317000 underscore 41,000 uh, with um, five zeros at the end. So I'll just open, um, oops. Didn't mean to open it, but if you have something that opens tips, you can actually see what it looks like in there. But I'll show where this was downloaded. And I had clicked a bunch of these, so I have a few different canopy height models that I downloaded. Looks like I kept clicking the same one. So here in my download folder, I can see that canopy height model. And if you use um, ArcGIS or QGIS, you can go ahead and open that in there. And this is that model of all the canopy heights over that. 
certain area within the site. So lastly, uh, if you have Red Stereo installed uh, in your Python instance, that's a nice package, Python package for working with raster data. And we'll go ahead and use that to plot the data directly in Python. Um, sometimes Python uh, GDAL packages are a little bit finicky. So if you have issues or had issues installing this, we're happy to help at a later time. So we'll just import Rasterio or raster IO as RIO, and then we'll import some plotting uh, packages as well. Matplotlib, PyPlot is the standard one. And then Rasterio also has its own plotting um, packages that are built off of Matplotlib. All right. Um, and for this next section, I basically was just um, assuming you didn't move the file anywhere locally. Um, you So you can use this if you've just saved it in your downloads and you're on Windows. This will allow you to uh, just pull directly from your downloads. Um, we always recommend kind of keeping things organized. So I'll go ahead and move this file. If I show it in folder, it's a little bit slow here. I'm just gonna move this into my local folder that we've been working in at my working directory. And that will just simplify the code a little bit. So um, I'll just say chm tip equals, and I can even just copy this path directly. So this is where I've saved the data. Or you could use, if it's in your local directory, you can use a dot slash for a relative path. So let's um, just make sure that looks right. Okay, so we're in our local directory and it's finding that file. And then we can do this rio.open to read it into this um, rest area variable that we'll call chm. So we can take a look at that CHM. So here is this, it's a data set reader um, and it's in, uh, opened in read mode here. So that's all just through this REST stereo package. And then lastly, you could just do, um, you could just say show CHM because we've pulled in that show package. And this is just a, a, an overview of what that uh, tile looks like. So. I don't have the scale on here, but the, the light green here are the trees and the dark blue are ground. Um, but we'll go ahead and make this a little nicer by using some of this plot setting. Um, and I'm just gonna copy it in here. But all this is doing is essentially formatting different things and showing the title and um, making it so that the, the y-axis here is not using scientific notation, things like that. So it just looks a little nicer. And then I use the green color map scale. So the darker green are the high trees and the light green are the uh, ground or, or even white is ground. So with that, hopefully you got a, a basic understanding of how the NEON API is structured. And uh, I'm just gonna wrap up with a couple things and we can ask questions. Um, but I do want to encourage everyone to take a survey. So I'll just pull this up and Claire will drop it in the link. So if you have to leave right on the hour, we just ask that you quickly um, provide feedback because we're always trying to improve our webinars and, um, and make them as useful as possible for the scientific community. So Claire's gonna drop that in the chat. And then just before we end and, and, and open up to questions, I wanted to point out that we have some upcoming seminars and webinars. Um, the next one is in March on Neon Soil. And then our next webinar uh, will be associated with that on working with the soil sensor data. So please, um, we encourage you to, to follow along and we, we thank you for joining us.